got to watch that. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. You are on with yours truly, Pastor Hosea, for the mental health panel. Yes, it is going down. I am outdoors, as you can see. I'm at another event, but we were not going to stop that from us going live on this mental health panel to deal with a very, very important subject matter today. And we're going to talk about mental health and how our physical activity and physical health can all play a part in that. How is how 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 each has a variable as it relates to the influence it has on another and how hand in hand when you neglect one you can find yourself neglecting the other and we've got some very special guests i can't wait to bring on but just want to give you a moment to come on and join us for this mental health panel i want to remind you that we do take live questions you can say you can uh, submit your questions in the chat box and we also have an email that you can do anonymous questions uh, let me remember that email <laughs> right now and so i can send it to you uh, email for anonymous Ooh. For anonymous questions questions show good afternoon sister Kiara let me also go on to my personal page so I can see who we have logging on there that it won't allow me to see on this particular platform. Don't want to miss out on nobody. Want to catch Lottie Dottie, everybody. Good afternoon, Sister B. Tanner Love, Sister Beatrice. God bless you. Hallelujah. We want to get everybody on here. Brother Robert Jacobus, thank God for you, my brother. Glad to have y'all. We finna get into some good, good, good stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get that email for anonymous questions. Let me hit my girl Cheryl up. She knows it. questions all right all right i'm going to post that email as soon as i get it just in case you have a question that you want to address but you want to remain anonymous so that we can still address that but anyone's more than welcome to type it into the comment the chat box at any given time and we will address it amen as we're doing that good good afternoon sister stephanie d thank god for you each and every one lottie dotty everybody i am excited about this afternoon we're going to get into some really 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 good stuff okay well with that being said i'm going to go ahead and open us up with a word of prayer i'm sure sister shelby getting me that email momentarily and i'll post it as soon as i have it and I'm going to prepare myself to begin to introduce our panelists today. So excited. So let's take a moment for prayer. Father, we thank you now for allowing us to be here together on this platform to educate, to inform, to learn, uh, to allow iron to sharpen iron as we grow from one another through one another, as we share thoughts, ideas, opinions, revelations, perspectives, and, and, and so on and so forth. And we just thank you for illuminating our mind, our understanding that we might have a greater comprehension to our human body, our human mind on 
our spiritual vessels, that the, you've created us to be, that we might maximize this life you've given us and to wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. We want to be made whole as you've ordained us through the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, oh God. We're grateful and we pray that each and every person that tunes into this broadcast will leave wiser, will leave better, will leave more informed, will leave inspired, oh God, and will leave empowered for success spiritually, mentally, physically, and even financially, oh God, because we know the greatest wealth is our health. So we thank you, Father, for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I want to jump right into some introductions right now. So with no further ado, let me begin. I first want to introduce a very great friend, great brother, and was also served as one of my personal trainers and have helped me intensely on this journey of a healthier me. I'm grateful God connected me with this brother many, many years ago. He served with me on I you know, on I am the International Young Adult Ministry at the City of Refuge. Uh, through his leadership and and, and 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 guidance, we were able to do a lot uh, with health and wellness in that ministry. We was able to even raise funds for greater causes, missions, and things of that nature. And I want to give you a little bit about him. He is the founder and director of Polarity Division, a.k.a. P2V. He has over 25 years of experience in this field. His last nine years, he served as one of the top trainers at Equinox. Uh, he's a fitness manager and team mentor at Equinox. He served there. He's the co-author of anthology book and number one bestseller on Amazon, How to Live a Vibrant and Healthy Lifestyle with the likes of Wim Hof, a.k.a. the Iceman, and many others. He's done so much charitable work with the U.S. Armed Forces internationally. He was also a soldier himself, so he's a vet. My brother, my friend, the one and only Paris Turner. What's up? <laughs> hey, PH. <laughs> How are you, my man? I'm doing well, brother. I'm glad to be here with you, man. Amen. Definitely, definitely. Well, we're going to keep it moving. I want to introduce, man, my girl, my friend, my sister. Oh, man, she's been, been connected to me for pretty much not long, only months after I set foot in Los Angeles, California, 14 years ago. God connected us shortly after that, and she has just, she's grown by leaps and bounds. I'm so proud of the awesome woman of God she's become, and she, we have her here today. She has, she wears so many different hats. She's a missionary. She's a yoga instructor. She's a CEO. She, <laughs> so many things among so many other things. And we have her here with us today. She's also helped me so much on my journey to becoming a healthier version of me. Something I learned from her years ago in a setting. She was assisting me in teaching uh, these uh, foster youth. Uh, life skills class. Uh, both Brother Paris helped me in that as well. And I remember something she said that I never forgot. She talked to them about finding your thing, like as it relates to physical activity. If there, there's something that you enjoy, because when there's when you can, when you don't find a thing you enjoy, it's so strenuous to commit to it on a regular basis. She said, find your thing and do it daily, do it often, and burn those calories. And I discovered through that statement she made that my thing was dancing. I enjoy dancing. And hence, when I used to give you Freestyle Fridays and I would just turn on my favorite playlist and, and make it do what it do for about 30 minutes, that was inspired by her. So with no further ado, the CEO, founder, president, director of Through Guidance Ministries, missionary Kendall Troutman. <laughs> what an amazing introduction. <laughs> you have me over here hollering, laughing. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm just in awe, first of all, that I get to do this moment with both of you brothers because we have known each other over a decade and have done so many aspects of ministry together. And it's just an honor to be here. So thank you so much. And thank you, Cheryl, for having for asking me to be a part of this. This is truly incredible. Definitely. Well, hey, I've got more and more special guests and we're going to get started. Now, this brother I'm bringing to the stage right now, fasten your seat belts, pull out your plates, your knives, your forks, because you're going to have a lot to eat and digest on your plate yeah. today. Uh, this brother is a licensed clinical psychologist, author, clinical assistant professor at the University of Southern California, a.k.a. USC in the house where he lectures. Yeah, I got a shout out. My daughter got a master's from USC. Go, go Trojans. And bachelor's from UCLA. So go Bruins. <laughs> it's like being a crip in the blood in the, in the academic world. Huh? Like, <laughs> this brother lectures on neuropsychology and research. He is called upon, he is a called upon mental health and wellness expert, having served as a consultant and a host for several TV programs. I've seen him on television several times. He's a contributor for outlets, including The Doctors, The Oprah Winfrey Network, Spike TV, CNN, HLN, Women's Health, Well Good Magazine, USA Today. His latest publication is The, Re is the Reality of Diversity, Gender, and Skin Color from Living to Classroom, Chapter 17. And here's, here's, a, here's a good fun fact. This brother is also an accomplished musician, singer, and songwriter, and he aims to inspire people to burst through their wall of fear and accept their innate brilliance. And I personally can attest to the fact he is an awesome instructor. I had the privilege of taking one of his psychology courses, amen, so I know him personally as a instructor, as a friend, and he's my brother. With no further ado, let me introduce to you the one and only Dr. Gabriel Crenshaw. <laughs> What's happening, buddy? You're too much. Uh, <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> I'm so, so, so excited. I'm so excited. So, hey, y'all, I'm only moderating. Again, I'm, out, I'm not in my normal element. I'm outdoors in the park. It looks I'm not good. in my office behind in front of my bookshelf because it's my daughter's 26th birthday. We're doing a crawfish boil. Hey. I guess opposite of this health stuff we're going to talk about. That was not right. I just realized that when I said it. <laughs> but hey, it's her birthday. That's why I'm out here. But no, no further ado, I want to jump right in. And we're talking about this whole uh, concept, if you will, as it relates, this is a mental health panel. We've been dealing with mental health throughout this pandemic and, and dealing with the stigma of people seeing mental health as, oh, I ain't crazy. No, it doesn't mean you're crazy. It, mental health is just like physical health. You can have poor health or you can have, you know, good health. And, and, if, and if we're not intentional about it, it's not likely for it to be good health if we're not intentionally taking care of that aspect. But today we're also bringing in the dynamic that our physical health plays in conjunction with that, which is why I have a fitness instructor, a yoga instructor, and an awesome therapist and, and, and great uh, teacher uh, with us today to talk about this. And I guess I want to start uh, from the just the mental health perspective, and then we work our way over to the physical. So I would like to start with you, uh, Dr. Crenshaw, as it relates to what role do, do, do they play that allows them to affect or influence one another? Physical health and mental health, is there a connection? And if so, how is that? Could you elaborate a little bit for that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks, Pastor Jose, for being here. I appreciate uh you invite me, I think it's great, really, and much needed. Um, and the other comments as well. Uh, to answer the question, big time they're related. In fact, <clears throat> you can't have any physical, any physical movement at all without first the brain activating that for you. 
So everything happens here, which is why you hear a lot of people say a mind is a terrible thing to waste, or if they can get your mind, they've got your body, they've got your soul, they've got your spirit. It's true because everything starts here. And so a real quick physiological lesson, and many people probably know this already, but we have neurons in our brain, sensory and motor in particular. And when you think sensory, it sounds like sense, right? Like you sense something. So everything you think, touch, feel, taste, uh, believe, um, it doesn't even have to be physical. You can just actually think something and it moves inside your brain. That thought goes to the motor neuron, which activates behavior. So I could think, I hate you so much right now. And I could have that thought and the motor movement could go, ink, 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 I'm gonna kill you. And so you wanna how did that happen? So when we crash into each other, we're upset with each other. We've got this pandemic cabin fever. I love my kids, but I don't like them very much. And I want to hit them and beat them into submission. The thought starts and then the behavior happens. And if we don't catch ourselves, right? If we don't catch ourselves and go back up to this thinking part of our brain, we're subject to do anything because our emotions drive behavior because of the subcortical region in the brain that activates whenever I get emotional about something. I want to do something. Somebody dies in my family, I got to do something. So I cry. Sensory neuron says you're sad. Motor neuron sends that message to the muscles and glands, tears or glands, you cry. I want to work out, right? So I start to sweat, which is a good thing, right? As parents will probably tell you, it's a good thing to work out. But that message sends that it starts out sensory, all right? And then all of a sudden you're on the treadmill and you're doing your thing or you're running. You can't do any more, but you keep going. All of a sudden you start to get your second win. That's because sensory sent a message to your neurotransmitter called endorphins, which does what? It releases the, the uh, body's natural painkillers and you start, to, it alleviates the pain and you can continue. So it all starts here. The message is here. It sends it out to the rest of the body to determine what your behavior will be. It's very, it's, it's very biological, it's very scientific, and there is no getting around it. I just want to clarify something, Dr. Gabe. Yes. So you said that when I get tired when I'm working out, how long does it take for it to send the <laughs> next <laughs> signal before I yeah. quit? Because I'm like, wait, what is the time frame on the turnaround on extending out those endorphins? Because I feel I, like I must be so close because right, I always exactly. quit, right? <laughs> Hey, I ask myself that too. Here's the thing, and people say, ask me that all the time. You have to keep going. The problem is when you first feel that, I can't do anymore, I can't do anymore. Right, Paris? You have to keep going, which is why it's good to have a trainer. You all start paying your trainers. They will push you, and then you go, I can't do it. After, after that, I can't do it, just go 10, 9, 8, 7, keep doing it. By the time you get to 3, 2, 1, bam. <laughs> It kicks in. And okay. Good about yourself. Okay. Don't quit. Don't quit. Okay. I, I got you. I appreciate that. But if it don't work, I'm coming for you, Dr. Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey y'all get valuable information. <laughs> He's the one that set all this up. <laughs> I, I set it up. up. <laughs> hey, I love that. <laughs> hey, you know what you just reminded me of though i remember watching this documentary a, a long time ago or, or maybe it was a book whatever it was it was about muhammad ali and one of the things they said about him the guy said he had been working out i don't know if it was sit-ups or whatever he was doing it he had been doing it for like a long time and then all of a sudden he started counting one two three and the guy's like wait a minute one two so you've been doing this all of this mm -hmm. time. Why, why are you counting now? You've done a hundred. He says, I only start counting when I feel like quitting. Yes. Because it's how many I can do when right. I don't want to do anymore that really matters. Right. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. Brother yeah. Paris, let's bring you into this conversation, man. I want you to elaborate a little bit. I know, I know you. You 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 jumping you turning flips on the inside. Talk to us. Uh, no, so I'm just enjoying just hearing what the doctor is saying. So he's right. Um, it's crazy because I used to struggle with anxiety um, big time. I was diagnosed um, just recently with PTSD and oh, wow. as well anxiety as a veteran. Um, you know, I'm a go veteran. I mean, I'm a go. I'm an Iraqi veteran. Uh, 
Gulf, you know, war veteran and uh, talking to the doctor, I had suppressed a lot of things that I had been through 20 plus years ago. Um, never really necessarily thought about how it affected, how logically I basically dealt with my own perspective on things. And so, you know, um, working out at the end of the day was my safe haven going through my separation 15 years ago, 20 plus years ago, being a young father, um, you know, just dealing with everything that comes with, you know, um, stress. Um, working out was always a haphazard way of making me feel better. It was how I coped. Um, and then when I got educated and started studying and so forth, understanding epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline and how it affects the heart rate and stuff like that. Um, I started getting into understanding that if I pushed myself, I would just feel real good. Like Kendall was asking, why or when does it happen? And typically it would be after I got out the gym and I would hop in the car. And let's say if I was going to the gym and if it was traffic, I was worked up. I'm hollering at traffic. But then after leaving the gym, I would get in the car and it's all bumper to bumper traffic and I'm chilling. I'm like, yes. you know, just I'm just relaxed, like, yes. dude, feeling great. Wow. I didn't know at the time what that was. And wow. then this last dot that I connected actually talking to this doctor, I realized my paradigm and all the things I had been through, I was suppressing a lot of different things. And I came up with my own meaning subconsciously of what I thought those things were. And now that I have a more clear understanding of why I did what I did when I was younger, I was diagnosed with hypertension in my 20s. Um, systolic and diastolic of, uh, I think I think my systolic was 170 and my diastolic was 90. So all this stuff was coming together now at 45, 40. Wow. And I'll be 46 in November. So, you know, when I was young, I didn't know I just fought through it. But yes, um, movement is everything. And it makes you, wow. it makes me feel um, so wonderful. And it is my drug now, man, just exercise. Well, hey, you guys, I have a question. I have a question. Let me post it on here before I ask a question. So those that want to ask anonymously, you see right there, anonymous mental health questions at calvarymentalhealth at gmail.com. That's how you can submit your question anonymously. We have the email address there in the chat box. So feel free to use it. Or you can just ask us right here in the comment if you're not, you know, if it's not something that you need to be anonymous about and we can address it even quicker. So please do those listening and tuning in, take advantage of that. My question is then, so as it relates to, you know how some of us that aren't gym rats, right? Oh. <laughs> right let me raise my hand. <laughs> is, is, is part of that not knowing we need to, but just not being able to get motivated to go all a part of our mental health issues is 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 there a and i don't you of course we've already established that mental health don't mean crazy but is it a part of is it is mental health the reason what my my, my state of mental health the reason i have zero motivation to do what i really want to do you saying it is dr gabe talk to me yeah it actually is um it's sort of a catch-22 and this is really serious um I want to be very careful how I say what I'm going to say. That's not the Dr. Gabe I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the world is watching. Right. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, well, there goes my dopamine. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I want to address specifically Black people for just a minute, okay? Uh, yes, please. Because I think we're often neglected when it comes to a conversation like this, we're lumped into a category with everybody else. To be black in America for any length of time is already operating at a deficit. You are literally coming into the race so far behind. Wow. That all by itself plays here. And I know it's, it's in vote for some people to go, you know what, well, there's nobody interested me and I don't have anything. Well, that's the devil trying true. to stop us from hearing say, you. Dr. Gabe, you dropping nuggets, but your internet is being disrespectful. Yeah, the devil don't want us to hear this right here. You blessing oh, us. Oh, no, what's happening? You can't hear me? Oh, it just no. happened right then. Yeah, it just happened. 
can, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I want them, maybe I should get my earpiece or something. Is, is, is that the problem? I don't know. You sound fine now. You're frozen, but you sound fine. I'm frozen? Really? Yeah, oh, but you sound heart. fine. It's more important for us to hear what you're saying. Let's just try to bring okay. that back again about how we as black people start with such a deficit. Okay, so we're operating at a deficit when we come here. Okay. So you're already in a you're already in a race where you're already lagging behind. But you're being told you are lazy, you are unmotivated. If only you could pull yourself up by your bootstraps. If only you all could stop playing the race card. If only you could just get inside mainstream, you'd be okay. So here we are on this trek, and we start going. There's nothing holding you back. But you have all these things with their knee on your neck. But you got to pretend like the knee isn't on your neck. So wow. you're already playing mental games with yourself. Mm. Then you got to be in shape. Then you got to be in school. And then you've got to be a great father. Then you got to be a great mother. And then you got to be a great student. And then you got to be a great worker and pretend like race has never been an issue. So everything you see on TV, from George Floyd to Eric Garner to Tamir Rice to Trayvon Martin to Martin Luther King to Malcolm X to Frederick Douglass to Tuskegee Experiment, we could just keep going back yes, to yes. civil rights to you know all of it, Jim Crow to hanging in trees. And yeah. everything we pretend we get to pretend like none of that ever happened so do you right. see the mental calisthenic that you're already having to do to pretend like the reality that exists doesn't really exist so you are already in a mental frenzy before you get out of bed wow so now i'm telling you you're gonna feel better if you can just exercise you just get to the gym and you don't you can't find the motivation to get there why because you have no serotonin in your neurotransmitter which is responsible for the ability to, to uh, be calm and rational your prefrontal cortex where all the thinking happens is so jumbled with all the other bs that you have to deal with it's hard to think clear and then the, the emotion of the people in your family that died at the hand of racism, the job promotion you did not get at the hand of some level of race or some unfairness. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to put race on top of it. And so I don't believe the world without that knowledge. When I'm driving down the street, I have a different perspective of potential police officer stop, right. officer stop, than anyone else. That wreaks havoc here. And so we're operating at a deficit. We want to work out. I really do believe a lot of us want to do what makes us what makes us feel better. But the the what we call the abolition, you just don't have the, the motivation to do it. And to go see a therapist is a novel experience for a lot a lot of us because we don't trust them. Why would I go yeah. see somebody who I know is going to pathologize me, tell me that I'm crazy when I already am denying a lot of the crazy in the world that yeah. exists already? Yeah. yeah. Does this make sense? And so Total sense. I get it. So then we just go to church and church is great. You're a pastor, mm -hmm. but we just go to church and we try to find solace there. But yeah. praise and worship, while it will give you some dopamine, is not going to change your right. situation like that. So then what happens is, it's like I'm going to say, what happens is, is you have the people who are the craziest they're the praise and worship leaders and they're doing their thing. Yeah. You know, come on, saints, lift your hands and do all this kind of stuff. And you don't even realize, they don't even realize just how depressed and anxious they really are. Because inside the church, you can pretend in yeah. this way. It's rewarded. You know, give God your last. Give God your highest praise, your sacrifice of praise. And so you just give it all, give it all, and you're releasing all this dopamine, but it's not going anywhere. It's not solving the problem. So people are going, I had no idea you were that depressed. You're one of the main praise and worship leaders because our church says this. If you do this, man, you really, really are in there with God. When in actuality, you're using praise and worship as an escape mechanism. It works. What, Paris, what is that? Oh. Sorry about that. Okay. It won't work. 
Hey it, man, it, it won't work. Listen, I want to. I want. I want to go back for a second. Um, those on, are some amazing on. topics, Doctor Gabe. W- one thing that Pastor Jose, where you were kind of starting with. So I don't like going to the gyms. I don't like taking fitness classes. That is not my thing, right? And I'm so happy that you always reference that moment that we had many years ago. I'm like, you got to just find your thing that makes you, you know. Right. Um, but when we're talking about the idea of being motivated enough to go do something as big as a workout in a gym or even just walking around your block. I think a great way to start the day is literally, and, and I'm, you know, even though I'm a certified yoga instructor and I'm a dancer and all these other things, I still struggle with this because to Dr. Gabe's point, I wake up with all the deficit and all of the anxiety and all, what, what's going to happen now? What is Trump saying? What is happening with the, <laughs> But you know, with, with you know, what's happening with all of these the, these kids that they're finding in Canada? Like, there's this constant thing that I wake up with. But a simple sun salutation on the side of your bed when we talk about movement. So it's just taking a deep breath. Arms come yes. all the way up. Yes. Arms come come all the way down. Touch your your toes. Roll your body back up. Just three of those with yes. breath. Inhale. Exhale. I yes. automatically feel like some of that just released down my, some of that worry, some of my anxiety, some of yes. my PTSD released to allow me to then go into the bathroom and then go on with my day. So yes. it, it, for me, it is, it's really these small things because I'm not going to get in my car, fight traffic into LA, find a gym. That is not my style, right? Mm-hmm. And and as a single mom, I don't have the time to do that. Like I'm, right. I'm running programs. I have a whole business. I'm like, I'm not, I don't have time to go to the gym, right. but what I do have time to do is three little sun salutations in the morning. <laughs> and after lunch, what I have time to do is walk the parking lot at my office yes. or walk the block, even if it's just 10, five minutes. Like yes. I just got to find these moments. But what I realize is when I'm outside, especially just taking an easy walk, I'm not huffing and puffing. I don't like to sweat. So I'm not going to do all of that, but I feel lighter. And I, as I'm listening, I'm like, oh, that's the dopamine is just playing a trick on you. But what I, what, I, what I will say, while that is releasing, it does allow me more clarity of thought yes. to, to be able to pursue more tangible things. So I've been yes. in therapy consistently now for three years, on and off for the past 15 years. And I see a life coach every month, even though... I, I'm very clear about my purpose, what I'm doing in life, like my businesses are thriving and all those things. But for me, having a life coach, it, 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 to Dr. Gabe's point, it allows me a safe space to download, to talk and to figure mm-hmm. out plans, how to navigate just stuff. It isn't about trying to heal from my childhood trauma or trying to dig up all, you know, whatever that is. Right. You know, when we look at the lens of therapy or counseling, for me, it's a, it's a space much like how I, you know, how you how you can utilize a pastor or a friend to say, this just really sucks. Mm-hmm. Can I get am I am I allowed to say that out, you know, yes. out loud to the yes. world? Like this sucks. Yes. I don't know how to do it. And the first time I was e- ever actually introduced to therapy, I was in seminary at Fuller Theological Seminary, and I was taking a course and I started to realize. Um, all of the injustices that were happening, the, the depth of the injustices that were happening to black children and Africans all around the world. And I felt so overwhelmed and I got mad at God. I'm like, you call, you, you call people to go to respond to these things, but the issues are so deep, so massive. You know, they go yeah. back generations. And in that moment, I realized, oh, you need therapy because you got to talk through how not to be pissed off at God. Yeah. How to navigate responding to these things and to understand your role in them, right? And so, yeah. anyway, I know I just went on a bunch of different tangents, but oh, I'm just trying to speak to all of those that are watching and that's like, I'm not going to no gym, I'm with you. But what I will do is a 20 minute yoga session, right? Yeah. Through th- three sun salutations. And I I, wear, I normally have on my watch and I wear a watch, tracks my steps. That's all I can offer my body for mm-hmm. movement on a daily basis. Hey, that's good. I want to speak to something you spoke to, and I want to address a question that's more generated uh, toward you and Paris, where everybody, but I want to touch this question. The first thing that you spoke to, and even to uh, uh, Dr. Griff's credit with what he said, it sounds like we in our community are not, we often feel maybe it makes us weak to need help. It makes us weak to 
need to talk to somebody to need to because because what i'm hearing from you kendall you have a team i have i so have to team, have a team without a team, the team the life coach the therapist yeah the, the even Church, your, your, all your of it yeah. relationship is a part of your team 100 percent <laughs> you know, I did a, um, a youth leadership training in uh, with foster youth many years ago, and we blindfolded them and put them on this. Um, we took a bunch of um, like bungee cords and had them all crisscross configured around these two trees. And the girls had to walk through and trying to find the end of these ropes. There was no end. Right. They couldn't speak. They couldn't talk to each other. If they needed help, they had to ring a bell. So of like 13 girls, two or one or two of them rang the bell to ask for help. Mm. The moment they rang the bell, we would remove them from the tree and say there was no exit. The other girls would much rather just keep going around, around this tree looking for the end rather than just say, I need wow. help and I'm missing something. Yeah. Wow. That right there. Yeah, they just wow. refused to ask for help, refused to, to ask for anything, even though it was one of the guidelines. You can you can ask for help. You can't speak. You can ring the bell. But that ask for help was was a challenging one. So I think that you're absolutely right. Before I touch this question, I want Gabe to speak to that. Dr. Gabe, why wouldn't they ask for help? What is the reason when they need it? Right, it's some, some things are just our personality. Mm -hmm. right, we're losing you again. I know this is going to be good. We're losing you again. Oh, man. Wow, and I see you guys. Okay, I hear you now. I hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? I hear you. I hear you. There's a couple things. One is just the personality, just people's true makeup. Uh, there are some people who just have a sense of autonomy where they just don't feel like they are such an independent spirit that they want to sort of figure it out themselves. And there are all sorts of personality tests that you can, you know, take and figure that out. But on a more global scheme, oftentimes to ask for help is weakness. And there is this, there is a thought system in our world, particularly, okay, we're here in America, even we're African American, we're here in America, and we do come from more collectivistic, more together kind of um, uh, environment, and family, and extended family. The individualistic westernized thought system, we are all a part of too. And some of our kids and even adults take on that more individualistic perspective because it's that I'm not made, right? You know, I, I did this myself, and there's a lot of uh, reward and congratulation and kudos that comes with, oh, my God, you know, they did that all by mm -hmm. themselves with no help. So you can hear that message for a lifetime, and you think suddenly to ask for some help right. is going to take away from your independence, your autonomy. Now, you bring that into mental health, or even like, whether you go to a doctor, a primary care physician, or a strength like me, I don't, I don't, I don't need any help because suddenly it says that there's something weak about me. There's a deficit in me. If I am black in America and the world has already decided that when I was born, I was born at a deficit, do you really think I'm going to spend time coming to somebody going, can you please help me? I'm weak. I don't know what to do. All I got is my time. So man, all I got is my man with my masculinity. I won't let you take that away from me by saying I need help. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I guess I would also think for these, especially in the foster system, that was crying out for help as a baby, been crying out for help as as in their very young ages to be disappointed, to have people leave. So now out of a defense mechanism, yeah. If absolutely. I don't need you, you can't hurt me when you don't show up. <laughs> so I'm well let me get to the question. I don't want to miss questions from out of because I could go on and on with this. And I want to speak to this with something that uh Paris told me a while back. Paris was training me, and one day he saw I showed up depleted. He just saw he saw it on me. I was counseling somebody when I was pulling up, and he was all ready for this workout. He was like, you know what, Paris, before we even start, he actually said, I'm gonna sleep you get last night. It was one of them nights I got like three or four hours. He said, Hey, you know, matter of fact, let me switch. I want you to walk around this track for this amount of times. I want you to breathe. I want you. 
And when he came back, he was like, I, I, I felt so much better. He's like, now we were cause like, like, like he, he, he saw my mental state. Yeah. What it's like he, 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 he dealt with my mental state before we even really got started on the yeah. Yeah. physicality. And this question says, how does breathing play a part in movement and mental health? Both Kendall and Paris have told me about my lack of breathing. I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. With the start it off, Paris, explain that. How does breathing play a part in movement and mental health? Why you own them about their breathing? Yeah, um, man, you guys are just gems. I mean, Dr. Gay, Kendall, like, I mean, I'm just actively listening and I'm taking in so much. It's so cool just sometimes to just listen and not run listen, my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, one, your systolic blood pressure, what your heart is doing is you're pumping blood out and that blood is taking nutrients to other cells. So basically it's taking um, the blood flow out and then feeding all the organs at the systolic number. Then your diastolic number is in between each beat. That's how much pressure is on the artery walls. So both are on the artery walls. When you're breathing, the templates, the little blood bubbles that are within the blood itself, it carries oxygen and it galvanizes the cells. And what it does is that it gets the brain to oxygenate. And the doctor is hitting a lot of scientific uh, strong points that I love because sometimes we tend to oversimplify things, but we don't talk the science. Um, and people don't realize that when you're breathing, Essentially, you can live off of water, you can live off of food, but try to not breathe for two or three seconds and wow. see what happens to your body. Your right. body's going to completely shut down. Um, for me, um, I have my clients do crocodile breathing. I have them to do different techniques. Um, you know, like I said, haphazard. Crocodile? Yeah, it's just different techniques that you can do. Whether it's diaphragmic breathing or cro crocodile Listen, breathing, Listen, Perry, you can't throw crocodile breathing out there and then yeah, not tell yeah, them what it is. You, you right? gotta, you gotta. <laughs> we, 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 I've been, I've been. That's my problem. I've been breathing like that. I'm like, Vinny, I'm having yeah, crocodile have breathing. breathing. Please tell me what that so is. Basically, you have someone to lay down on their stomach, and you can take like a weighted pillow. I mean, like a weighted bean bag or just a pillow, and. People typically do what is called paradoxal breathing. So what happens is they're not, first you have to get the lungs, which the diaphragm is the biggest muscle in your core. And it's like an upside down mushroom. So it's like a stalk going up here and then it spreads out at the bottom. And so what you do is you get this person to lay down on their stomach and you put your hands on the side of their stomach and you tell them to first sip to get the diaphragm muscles to start mm. to shrink out because it's atrophy, meaning that you're not even taking deep breaths. So your actual diaphragm becomes tight. So you're not even really utilizing it as much as you should. And so you put your hands. So I put my hands on the side of a person's waist and I tell them to take a deep breath, inhale the nose. And what happens typically if they're inhaling and I don't get a push out from the side of their waist, they're paradoxal breathing. So what's happening is they're just taking the oxygen to the chest and they're not bringing it all the way down to the diaphragm. But you first have to get the nervous system to even, I mean, to actually adapt to just taking breaths because people are so used to taking short breaths that right. they don't know how to get the oxygen down to the diaphragm. And then what happens is, is once I see that the size of the stomach is pushing out, now I know I'm getting that oxygen down in the diaphragm area. And then I just have them to breathe out. And so that's a good way of, let's say one of my clients who, you know, work in 80 hour work weeks. And I told you to take just a break from me because I can tell you was jumping out of one situation. Mm -hmm. So your vibrations and your frequencies, you know, you were on another level. You were still there. So I needed yeah. you to take the time out to fill your cup up, walk around the track and start breathing haphazardly. So when you come and see me, I can have your undivided attention. That's the problem is people don't take the time out to just diaphragmically breathe it grounds you, puts you in the moment because now you're following your breath. You're here on earth yes. again. Yes. You're not subconsciously yes. an wow. hour ago, two hours ago. And so when you're just breathing in your chest, you're going to get anxiety. And that's what I did all the time. 
I was wondering why is it that my heart is jumping out my chest and I'm sweating and having these panic attacks. And what I didn't know was that I was doing for years what is called paradoxical breathing and just keeping the oxygen in my chest. And so if you understand this, this is a simple practice that you can do. That's like a superpower. If you're a, I mean, literally, you can literally transform your reality within minutes if you just practice this. Wow. Just breathing. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I didn't know it was that much of an art. That's real good. <laughs> I mean, without, well, what, what, I mean, because you know, because you coached me years ago, PH. You told me yeah. to stop being so sciencey. So I don't really get too much into that. I more so want to drive you or the person I'm dealing with into what I want. And then if you want to know the why, I'll break it down. But breathing is everything. It's everything. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So, Kendall, why was you on this person about their lack of breathing? Um, I mean, I think that Paris definitely touched on it. It allows you to be more present in what is happening now and really allows you to separate from whatever was happening, whatever you're thinking about. It allows you to be present. And this particular <laughs> friend of mine, um, she <laughs> needs to be more present. I'm just gonna call her name, and she can. Don't you, do you, it. No. You, can just, you can just put it in the chat if you're mad. Cheryl needs to be more present. So when you're somebody like Cheryl, who has this heart for people, heart for for the world, like wants to carry people's stuff, wants to help people solve problems, is fighting the criminal justice system all day, like really is a genuinely good, dope human being. She has to figure out how to turn that off. And I remember when when I first one of the first few times I came to um, her her place many years ago, I was like, you should, you know, turn this little area. She, she decided to turn it into like a meditation prayer space to also remove yourself from everything in your house that distracts you, that re that reminds you of what needs to be done, what had, you know, what, what hasn't been completed, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, you got to find a place to go and breathe and take those breaths to center yourself to focus on what is now and to just be more mindful of everything that is happening around and mindful of yourself you know my um lung collapsed last year three times and now it's permanently attached to my chest wall but i remember when i was on that flight from los angeles to qatar not knowing that my lung had collapsed i'm on the floor of this plane and it's like a 13 hour flight and i just kept feeling like for the first time ever, I became so much more aware of my breath because I couldn't catch it and how my the other parts of my body responded from the lack of me breathing. So Paris, you talk about, and I don't know the terminology, but you talk about just breathing in the chest. That's so many of us, like the, the inability to breathe from the diaphragm, unless you're a singer or something like I struggle now as much as I've been doing yoga and meditation to carry my breath very deep. but. When you're when when you're able to to breathe and pay attention, it it allow it can it can allow you to pay attention to everything else that's happening in your body. And so now I'm way more mindful when I'm breathing, how my back feels, my knee, my my shin. I'm just a lot more cognitive because I'm more mindful of what is happening in my body and around me during that time. So. Yeah, breathing really, really helped me. Like I, I've I've been doing it now for, I guess, a couple of years, consistently, and that's taking time out to just sit quietly and take deep breaths. And anytime I do it, it it I feel like mm -hmm. I hit a release valve, like mm -hmm. I deep press, like 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 all of a sudden I can think clearer. I'm more peaceful. It's like I took all of this stress for a minute and just kind of put it down. <laughs> That's what yes, I feel. Like. Yeah. I laid it down for a minute and, and I and, 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 and I've tried to make it a habit, especially in the mornings when I start my day. But I tend to go from breathing to just kind of meditating to then visualization of what I desire. But no, I believe breathing is everything. Is there something that that's really said about breathing in the mental health field, Dr. Gay? Is that something that's that has a focus in that conversation? Yeah, it, it is. And Paris really hit it all. I don't need to say anything else. Uh, <laughs> he really hit it. Um, breathing, when you breathe properly, it oxygenates your brain. 
So remember, I started by saying nothing happens until it hits the brain first, and then the message is sent out. So <clears throat> when they're telling, when, when Paris or Kendall are telling people to breathe, particularly when you're exercising, uh, it's because you need to become very present in the moment uh, because that will stimulate your prefrontal cortex and get you out of what we call the subcortical region, things like the amygdala, which is responsible for emotion and can get you in a frenzy. And most importantly, your sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight response. Everybody's heard of that, right? Fight or flight. You see right. 10 Rottweilers, what are you going to do? Fight them or are you going to run? Right. <laughs> uh, Cause you're, you know, and so breathing protects you from you. And I thought it was very interesting wow. to hear what Kendall and, uh, was saying and Paris saying too, that you have to be present. I think Kendall, your friend, you were like, you, you have to become present with yourself. People who are always helping other people to the exclusion of themselves. Yep are not in touch with themselves. Yep. When you start to breathe, it's it's not selfish. Um, it's required to live. <laughs> it's it's mandatory. Yeah. And so you could spend a lifetime, you know, doing that paradoxical breathing that Paris was talking about and never really get to the center of who you are, which means mentally, you never really know yourself. Yes, sir. Wow. So then the question becomes, why don't you want to know yourself? Right. Mm. You want to spend all this time helping everybody else get to know themselves, mm -hmm. but you, <laughs> when it comes to knowing yourself, and if you really sit down and talk to people and go, okay, hold on a minute, let's just concentrate on you. Literally, some people in my office has gone, Okay, but there's really not a lot to really to, to talk about. Yeah. I mean, that's I, that's not why I'm here. I'm here because of my wife and my husband and my kids. And they say, what are you even excited about? Right. All of a sudden, you're here in your chest because you are afraid to go here to get to you. Yeah. That is a mental block that will forever stop you. <laughs> 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 yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, this one, this one is for Kendall. Uh, hey, Brenda. It's so good to. See. Uh, that just made my heart smile. Hey, sis. And here's the last question: What's the difference between a strenuous workout and a more relaxing workout? Is one better than the other for different mental ailments? You want to start on that, Paris? I'll throw it to you first. Yeah. Um, speaking of helping, Cheryl told me to talk more. I said, I don't want to be rude. So <laughs> I'm waiting my turn. Um, that's a great question. Um, so basically, what would um, constitute as strenuous is when the cortisol levels are too high. Um, when you're fight or flight, like Dr. Gabe said, when you're in fight or flight, you're producing from the adrenal glands, a lot of adrenaline, epinephrine and cortisol. And those are being spewed into the blood stream. And two, um, it has been proven scientifically that adrenaline um, just doesn't dissipate. It doesn't go away, even though your cortisol levels drop. So stress literally is within the organ tissue, you know? And so okay. when I have clients, that's why I ask you, if you slept, if you're not yeah. sleeping, then your cortisol levels are high. Right. And so you have to get REM and deep, REM and deep. There's at least, you should be getting at least six cycles, which is equivalently, if you're getting that window, I hear, oh, you need to sleep nine or eight. I don't believe in that. Everybody somatically is different. Everybody's body type is different. So if you get the six, now you're getting the all three waves and you should be getting that deep. When you get that deep, that's when your body is healing itself. And that's when that cortisol level is dropped. Um, it's actually dropping. I've had a full blood panel. I've been doing it for years. So I know this from experience. I had elevated cortisol levels in the middle of the day. And what was happening, I was drained and tired when I was at work and then I couldn't sleep at night. And I'm up like this, waking up, thinking that it's time to go to work and it's two in the morning. 
You remember, I, you remember I was teasing you about that? You know, thinking you're getting the word. Sometimes, no, you just jacked up. I mean, not you, but me just in general. Long story short, um, cortisol levels, when they're high in the blood and you come in to work out. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk on the treadmill. And that's why it's good to walk when you're tired. Because when you walk and you're in an aerobic state, which is 65% of your heart rate. Everybody has a target heart rate. 65 and below is aerobic. Anything above 65% is anaerobic. So you always want to stay at 65 or below and just walk, and that will bring down your cortisol levels. But you do want to do something, even if you're tired, because you want to get your body that's jacked up on vibrations and frequencies from working on the laptop to do something so you can sleep. Right, it's just right. that you need to do something very chill and subtle where you can have a conversation and also move at the same time. And if you're doing that, that'll bring down your cortisol levels. And then that would be actually equivalent to a hard workout if you had slept all, all night and then you want to come in and go hard. So I tell people, well, I didn't get good sleep. So I don't want to work out today because I don't want to waste my workout session. No, 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 no. But listen, you have a die, a dichotomy of there is no like you have moderate workouts you have light workouts and then you have heavy workouts we're going to do whatever is needed for you to continue to get to the end goal mm. you don't necessarily have to sleep eight hours to always come in and work out we just modify the variables and then bring down the cortisol levels mm. now it's just equivalent as you going hard and that's no, wait, wait wait hold on paris now i don't know how to gauge my cortisone levels and i'm not i don't have a, a trainer simple. But no, 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 no. And I don't want to know. And from a layman's perspective, back to that the question, I'm like, are my yoga, walking, sun salutation, maybe roller skating in the parking lot, it, does that suffice for, for mental health? Or does it need to be more intense? More This super intense workout that, you know. So basically you go off of, because some people only sleep five hours a night. And some people struggle with sleep. So that individual is going to most likely be more sympathetic dominant, like, like you know, Dr. Gabe was saying. So when you have someone who is sympathetic dominant, then you want to basically make the bulk of your workout program that type of activity because you're more prone to having high cortisol levels to answer your question. Um, and yes, it does suffice. Um, if you're someone who's basically just pushing sometimes because you have a deadline driven project, so you only got four hours of sleep, then necessarily you want to throw in some days where you're doing a little bit more intense workout strength training. But that's because you just know at the end of the day that you are getting to sleep in a seven day period. So remember, environment demands a response. Everybody's environment is different and yeah. semantically everybody is different. Also, there are deficiencies in terms of nutrients, your gut is your brain. It's your first. It's your first place that everything goes. The brain is the core. Okay, so it is the most important. But the first place that everything that goes into your body first goes into your gut. And so a lot of times people are just deficient in nutrients because they're not absorbing for whatever sole reason. And then Dr. Gabe also said that, you know, as you know, Black Americans and you know, people of color, we're dealing with cellular stress and a lot of things from our past. So we're already deficient because we're descendant of slaves. And so a lot of times if you're not getting blood panel work and you don't know what you're deficient in, that, I mean, you can have a fatty liver and not lose any weight and do everything right. So you got to find out where your blood panel is. That's good. That's good. You know, I just want you to, one thing on that, because you talked to me about that, with just for the sake of people knowing how would they go about finding that out? I know you've told me, but I want to, to get those. Unfortunately, you know, our, you know, our medical and health system is a bunch of crap because yeah. they want to make money off of it. Yeah. And they're not going to teach us this in schools. And remember, I was just diagnosed with PTSD. My daughter told me something was wrong with me. You wow. Know, my family was telling me. It's wow. hard to be outside yourself when you're going off on people. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, right. You know, Doc, you would have fun with me. Um, <laughs> like, I have two boxes. I have the crazy box and a normal box. 
my crazy polarity that's the name of my company P polarity to vision my crazy is crazy i am a little crazy i'm just not as crazy as you <laughs> and i learned about sociopath and narcissistic and all that stuff so i've been studying myself doc said to get to know yourself and then you got normal box and i'm not normal. so i'm crazy and i'm not normal <laughs> so the only reason why I have all this information is because I'm a hot mess. Right. And I know that about myself. Yes. I'm a hot oh, mess. Yes. But that's the only reason why I know about any of this. I just didn't quit. Right. That's what and that's what I'm saying. And to that, you know, to that same point, like knowing that. What Dr. Dave was talking about before, like I, I'm, I've been so committed to trying to destroy <laughs> our generational stuff and really trying to give myself and my child a shot. I got to be committed to doing my work, even when I don't want to, even when it doesn't feel good. You know, I have to do my work. I have to show up to my therapy. I have to show up. I have to eat right. I, I'm so committed to not being like who some of the lineage that I come from, <laughs> my environment, I still, you know, I'm from South LA. I still live in South LA. I love, I, I'm, you know, I love being a part of, of South Central, but I'm just like, I also see the beauty, the beauty in South Central. And then this other part, I'm just like, my commitment to change the generational stuff in my family's life is what makes me show up all the time. And like, and to your point, I'm like, I know, I know where I fall short as a human <laughs> and I don't want to be like that. And I don't want to teach it to my seven year old. So I got to do the work in, or in order for things to change. And, you know, that's the journey I've let been me, on. Let, let me, can I, let me say something real quick. Yes. This is, this is amazing. I wish this could go on and on and on. Parents, I just love you and Kendall, you guys are just awesome, really. Uh, <laughs> you said one thing that struck me, uh, Kendall. I don't want to be, I don't want this, I don't want that. I got to make sure I don't give that to my daughter. I don't, I don't. If everybody out there, I want to offer everybody this. And it's just, it's not a mental trick. It really isn't. It might come across that way, but it's not. Decide what it is that you want and only say that. Mm, what I mean is, nice. is, so there's a way to say, I want to make sure I, I don't want to be that thing that from this line, from that. That's one way to look at it. The other way to see it is, I want to be healthy, mentally, physically, et cetera, spiritually. I want to be able to have pressures and problems that come up just in every day, even things in my past, and deal with it this way. That's what I want. What you do when you do that, only speak about what you want, then your mind and the universe, God, all that co-conspires with you and the only result you'll ever get is what you is want. what you want. When you say, "Oh my God, I don't want this," believe it or not, your focus is not on what you want. Your what focus you is on want. what you don't want. So That's guess good. What happens? That's good teaching. Your future keeps unfolding in this self same way because your focus is on what you don't want. As a result you're not putting the energy into what you want because you're spending so much time making sure that your future doesn't go with what you don't want, which ironically gives you exactly that, what you right. don't want. Teleology, instead of letting, don't be led by your past push, don't be, you don't, not, you don't have your past push you into your future. You let the future you want pull you. Right. That's the difference. Right, right. That's good. And intuitively we all know it, but I'll, even if I'm on the freeway and I'll go, oh my God, I don't want to be late. And so, like, Gabe, come on, you know better than that. I'm late. going to be on time. on time. Right. It changes it the does. whole paradigm, which changes this, which changes the behavior, which gets in that gut health. Because parents, is, I mean, dude, you are, Lord, I need to see you. But yeah. he's absolutely right. The brain and then the gut, man. All of a sudden, all the stress and all the fear and all the anxiety goes right here. And then you're like this. And it's a mess. Right. And to answer the panel question, you have to pay for that. Unfortunately, they, they, they get really, really expensive. Um, but I paid for that out of my, out of my pocket. Insurance, 
Um, you know, there's ways to get around it um, where if you do have some type of uh, PPO or some type of insurance, but you got to pay for it right now to get a four panel. But I'm telling you, if like, and you know, I'll talk to you offline about it, PH, but that's one of the things that I want to do is I want to, you know, start a nonprofit and start making things more available for our community to fix a lot of the problems that I know that they're not going to get fixed if we don't step in like people like us and take our expertise to help our community. You're right. So true. So, hey, let's let's do because, y'all, you know, boy, this is good. And we already over time. So let's go over closing remarks. And my brother, I saw your question. I answer it in my closing remarks because it's more of a pastoral question. All right. So let's start with uh, who did I just, just heard from Gabe, just heard from Paris. Uh, come on, Kendall. What my closing say? thoughts um <laughs> when you get out of the bed in the morning after you give thanks do some sun salutations take a deep breath set intentions for your day and commit to something and see it through that's all i have that's good for the parents it's so much but i'm just going to just say this one and it was from yesterday um i've been you know when you have a goal you have a problem most people don't want to see it that way, but you, wow. because, uh, you know, and goal is something that I've never accomplished or we've never, uh, you know, accomplished before. So there's no, the there's no theoretical knowledge that has to be rep repetitiously practiced and your skill level is going to be low. So you're going to struggle. And I've been going through that. And one of the things I told myself yesterday is Paris, just be grateful, you know, just be grateful because at the end of the day, you know, if that's what God wants you to have, then you have it. And if I need you to shout for the galaxy so you can land in the stars. So you got to start, stop a, stop attaching so much to what you want, because when you attach, you only suffer. So just be grateful. Yeah. Wonderful. And Dr. Gay, closing. I like I've talked already. I, I just, <laughs> uh, really, I don't have much else to say. Um, People give give your give yourself the gift of you, and I know it's in vogue wow. to do that. You know, live your best life, and it's become such a saying. I'm not even sure what that means anymore. But give yourself the gift of you. That's good. Breathing, uh, exercising on any level, uh, taking time for you. Don't be afraid of you. Don't be afraid to oh. breathe. But mm. don't be afraid of you. And I and I'm talking to Gabe too. All of the gifts and the talents and everything that you have, that's your freedom. That's your bliss. Go for it. And if you're really scared and you're afraid, you've got Pastor Hosea, you've got people like Paris and Kendall. Utilize these people. They look like us, even if they don't look like you might be white here, Asian, whatever. What these guys have to offer is, 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 is it goes beyond a color line. Give yourself the gift of you. I think it's the greatest thing we all can do. The creator created everybody with a very special brilliance. Your job is to execute the brilliance in which you were born to do. And that you own free and clear. Get clear, go where you need to go to get clear so you can walk into your own brilliance. That is easy and you'll be rich in your life. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love it. That other question was my depressed friend told me that it's better for us to stop talking because she thinks she's toxic. Brother, if you listen to this panel, you know that means she needs to work on her. And right. maybe you're distracting her from doing that. <laughs> Let her find herself, support her, but respect her wishes at the same time. Continue to support her and encourage her and just be an inspiration. And but check on her. Check on, check, on check, on check on your depressed friends. Check on your depressed friends. Check on her, like to be there. But I'm saying, don't mm -hmm. force her against her wishes and only drive her further away. Is what you don't want to do. But pray for her, seek her, encourage her, check on her. But she does need and encourage her to get some therapy, some personal help. That's the best thing you can do for her, is to help her get the help that she needs. Amen. Now, right. I put all of Dr. Gabe's information, his Twitter, his Facebook, his email, so you guys can reach out to him. It's in the chat box. Sister Kendall, how will they reach you? What's your social media or whatever of the best way? Email, if you want to go to the website, what's the best way? I can throw it in this chat? Yeah. Okay. 
I like to stay in touch with you you guys too. <laughs> really. Yes. Sure. I love smart people. <laughs> hey, I'll make sure each and every one on this panel has everybody's contact so we can all stay connected. Yeah, this is really cool. Yes. This right here is therapy for everybody watching. It's sure therapy. is. You feel me? Like, yep. like he's out here, she's out here, he's out here. Life's not so bad. <laughs> yes, right, right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So, okay, Kimmel, I got you. All IG right. at Flyers Missionary. Flyers Fly dot missionary. Missionary. Flyers dot. Don't forget that dot. Yeah, if, if you, just in case you hadn't noticed, uh, Dr. Gabe, she's not your average missionary. No, I ain't. But I am I one. <laughs> and I have been one for 10 years. <laughs> The one, while true. I'm wrapping up and I'm typing this in the mail in the, in the chat box, why don't you tell them a little bit about through guidance and brother Paris, if you have an email address or anything like that, uh, or information you want to put out there, just text it to me and I'll put it in. I got yeah, you. Yeah. So for the past, uh, for 10 years, we've been doing free visual and performing arts camps for kids in Rwanda, Haiti, Grenada, wow. Mansfield, Louisiana, Cachetta, Louisiana, and on and off here in South LA. Um, and then just like providing education for a few kids in Rwanda. But we pivoted last year because of the pandemic, we weren't able to travel. So I just uh, secured a partnership with the LA Kings and the Toyota Sports Center. And I now have a diversity ice skating program that just opened at the Toyota Sports Center in March. I have 32 black and brown kids wow. um, learning how to do ice hockey and figure skating. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. And we're branching it out into other rinks. Um, also have a community garden, a vegetable garden at Calvary, which is where our corporate offices are. And we're teaching kids how to grow food, harvest food. And about a third of our kids now have gardens at home, which is really incredible. Hey. I know. And through our partnership with the American Heart Association Teaching Gardens Program, we are now doing garden workshops in the community. So right before this, I was at Crenshaw United Methodist Church teaching the community there how to harvest. They have a garden literally located on the, on the front porch of their church for the community to come in and out and get food as they so desire. We are also um, currently sponsoring 15 kids who just started kindergarten in February. We'll be paying for their academic, their all of their tuition, school clothes, uniform, PE supplies, medical insurance for the next 15 years. So we'll be growing up with these kids. And then we have 29 grab and go locations around LA County. We've distributed just shy of 3.2 million meals, free breakfasts and lunches since March 30th of last year. And, um, and yeah, and so that's, that, that's what I do. That's yeah, what I'm busy. doing right now. Always been busy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> My God, next to you, I feel really yeah. okay. I'm like super busy, but it's like really good work. Oh, we just started a dance program at Calvary. Uh, um, and so, yeah. so well, I forgot about that. It was like yeah, a month old. Right. You rolled the stone away and Jesus came out too. Wow. <laughs> no, you know, I'm I am just and I hope that everybody who's watching, I'm really sensitive to how the spirit moves in my life. And when I see opportunities, I'm just not afraid to go after them. You know, like the George Floyd gave me my diversity ice skating program. I really should have named it after him because it was because of his death that I got it. You know, a lot of companies were releasing statements about black lives. Toyota Sports Center didn't. I was a customer there. My daughter was a synchronized ice skater. I reached out to them to see if they were going to release a statement. And we kind of had some silence for a little while. So then I showed up at their office and was like, I need to know if you're going to release a statement. And um, we had a brief conversation. I came home and shared that, you know, I was a little disappointed about my experience. And then a month later, I have a partnership with LA Kings Toyota Sports Center and have a diversity ice skating program. But it, <laughs> that was all Congratulations. You know, in, in the name. Thank you. But in the name of George Floyd, you know, I'm like yeah, yeah. that happened. And as a result of that, this beautiful thing gets to happen. And I got 60 kids. It's well. They dominate the NHL and the, the uh, Winter Olympics. And I hope I live long enough to see the NHL, you know, 70% black and brown. 
instead of the two percent that's represented now. So we'll see. Very good. You know, when we get in there, you know when we get wherever we get. listen. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, that's why they keep it. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all don't even know. Are we looking at the future right here, right here, about to dominate this ice? Absolutely. So, so anyway, anyway, it's been a pleasure, everybody. Definitely. Y'all, that's our time, Brother Paris. I know you rebranding and things of that nature. So you're waiting on your rebrand for them to yeah, connect? Yeah, basically, um, I'm transitioning out of Equinox after nine years. Um, I've been in the industry for um, 25 years, but it's time for me to go. So I had to deactivate all my social media accounts. You can reach me at polarizedvision at gmail.com. Um, and I have my Instagram up, but I'm going to be rebranding myself. When I come out, I won't have my name. I'll just have my company's name. So I'm looking forward to that. But you can always reach me at my email or you can give me a like on P2V because I got to build up my followers. Okay, that's Polarize2Vision at gmail.com. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Polarize and it's, uh, it's P-O-L-A-R-I-Z-E number two vision v-i-s-i-o-n at gmail.com and then my um instagram is polarity and this one one and then a small v and uh yes we've been kind of in the cut. i just been pretty much introverted i haven't been doing no social media i've been over there for the corporate corporate slave uh, plantation <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean hey, it was, hey, it was hey, yeah. At least you was in one of the largest plantations. Listen, at least you was in a bougie one. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't, 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 don't look at this one. lavender tiles y'all got in there. All right. <laughs> you gotta do it. You was doing it the way you better do it, brother. <laughs> All good, man. Hey, and I love you guys. Thanks, everybody, for right, joining thank us. You. Until the next time, we're going to try to do that for another mental health panel on the last Saturday of next month. Stay tuned for service tomorrow. I got a special announcement. I'm announcing when we starting back public services in right. So stay tuned until that time. See you later. God bless. We're out. Bye-bye. Hey, Doc, I'm